Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1. In this episode we're going to tackle Minmus and talk a little bit more about inclinations and how to handle them. We already know that with inclinations it's really bad to try and change your inclination when you're close to a gravitating body like Kerbin. So how do we handle inclination? We'll see the various techniques for doing that. But first let's check out some of the new parts I unlocked at the end of the previous episode and how they can change the rocket that I'm going to launch to Minmus. So, on my previous moon mission design, all I'm going to do is put the Terrier in place of the swivel engine that we had on the upper stage. The Terrier does have gimbling. Uh, somebody in the comments reminded me to mention that the Terrier does not have an alternator, right? This has an alternator that produces electric charge. The Terrier does not. So something that we should do is probably get some solar panels as soon as possible. We do not have solar panels right now. Incidentally, we should also be looking to land on Minmus. And unfortunately, these are our best lander legs. Not exactly looking like it's going to be very stable, is it? So that's not great. We could do with some better lander legs. So I'll file that in. We've got a lot of radiators. Not much else. Okay, uh, so let's just see what kind of effect this will have, switching out the heavier and less efficient engine for lighter and more efficient engine. Uh, certainly I do think that this will get us to Minmus just fine and uh, not have any problems getting the Kerbal back. So that's good. Let's see, staging is a little bit weird. We've got that engine, but then this decoupler is not in the right place. Got to send Jeb this time, I think. Okay, well, uh, let's not uh, waste any time. Let's get on with it, and hopefully we'll get the science. Oh, uh, we could put some scientific instruments. I mean, we've really been lax about that, haven't we? Um, we really need the science to unlock more things, and it is time to have a thermometer. It is time to use a communitron to communicate the information back. We'll do a modicum of what is known as Minmus Science Spam because there are so many biomes on Minmus and remember a lot of science is biome dependent we can actually get a lot of science very easily from Minmus and hence Minmus si Science Spam is a great way to boost your research. Very well, here's Jeb. You can put SAS on. Now, the first possibility for matching inclinations with Minmus is actually to launch into Minmus's inclination. And the way you would do that is uh, there, there are other tools that you could use to make this easier, but here we'll launch more than one Minmus mission today, so we'll try different things. So here it, it appears that we're right on with uh, Minmus's orbit, and since Minmus's orbit is a little bit north from here, by about 5 degrees. We will go north by 5 degrees. Normally we would launch at 90 degrees, so we'll launch at 85 degrees and see if we can better match Mimis's orbit like that. I know it's complicated, and there are other ways of doing it that will be simpler, and I'll show those later. But this is one way that you can get into the right inclination very quickly, uh, right from the launch. So there is a benefit to that. The benefit is that you're combining the inclination change with your launch, so the, the launch itself costs so much delta V, the inclination change doesn't make much of a difference to how much delta V you need to get into orbit. Okay, here we go. So as soon as we start deviating from the from the prograde vector, I'll start the center. Yeah, well, it's ray tilting, so let me get some control here. So Again, we want to be a little bit off from the 90 degree mark. We really don't need to be rotating that quickly. But without other tools like uh, Kerbal Engineer or MechJeb, for instance, which will give us a display to show what our relative inclination to Minmus is, it's a little bit difficult. Obviously, we can target Minmus. Uh, we have done so. And right now, it's showing us our relative inclination. You can see here the ascending node and descending node saying we're 3.2 degrees off 
And note, I launched very close to my descending node. This line here is showing that where I really should have been. Where I really should have been was here. But uh, we're pretty close. Ooh, I need to tilt more. I'm uh, not paying as much attention as I should. Uh, let me throttle down. Ooh, 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 oh, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, maybe this is a good time to cover recovering from flips. <laughs> Since we have no choice. Alright, so this happens when you're not paying attention and not hanging on to your prograde vector. Uh, I should have done that earlier. Only thrust when you're pointed up. Sort of obvious. If you light your engines when you're pointed down, that's not going to help you. Or pointing in uh, retrograde is not good either. So you want to be pointed prograde, you know, in, in the same general direction as where you want to be going. So that's about here. Okay. Now there's no atmosphere really, so we're fine. Not too much lost on that. Okay, so here we say we see ascending node 2.6, 2.7. Okay, so that's going up. We w we want to adjust that. 2.5, 2.4. Obviously, we're trying to get to zero. And because we're doing this as part of our launch, it's not going to be so costly. In fact, it's probably going to be less costly than the flip was. Now, you can see the node is running away from me. And that means that it's getting less and less possible for me to adjust the inclination. Okay, uh, it, we have to be at the node in order to fix the inclination, and since it's going away, once we get to a 90 degree angle away from it, uh, we can't do much anymore. So keep that in mind. Right now, it's probably not possible for us. Well, I seem to be adjusting it a little bit. 0.4 degrees is not too bad. 0.4 degrees will definitely work out for us. So I'm just going to point prograde now. Okay, uh, we need to set. I have not been as attentive to my poor rocket as I should have been. Also, once again, forgot to dump, lim dump the mod propellant. So, we corrected 5 degrees of inclination without too much trouble by just taking a look at the orbit of Minmus and seeing where the KSC was going to hit it. And then as we continued in flight, if it was increasing uh, because we were tilted one way with regard to the prograde vector, we tilted the other way. Sort of went like that. Oh, we're getting pretty high there. Let's coast to apoapsis. Here's another thing. Um, if you have to burn at apoapsis and you still got a correction to do, you can just do both. Let's take a look at the relative comparison. So, obviously we need to lift our orbit. Let's say we just lifted our orbit at apoapsis to a good orbit. How much does that cost? Okay, that's pretty good. Nine, let's call it 98 kilometers. Cost 233.2. Now let's actually do it over here and also correct the inclination. Let's do that first. This is the ascending node. So I'm going to pull the one pointing down and that will turn into the descending node. Now it's at zero. Okay, so we've totally corrected it. Now let's boost. Well, that's a hundred. Uh, so it costs about 5 meters per second more to correct that bit. Which is, you know, probably what it would... It's not going to be too different from what it would cost even if we did them separately because 0.4 degrees is not much to correct, frankly. For the larger amounts, it would be more noticeable. Oh, I better make sure that I don't use too much electric charge. We can't replenish it after we get done with this stage. Okay, set ignition. That's fine. So now we're in orbit, 0.1 degree difference, and there's Minmus. Alright, so much like the moon, you can just uh, fill around with your maneuver to figure out where to hit Minmus. As long as you're at the right inclination. We'll, we'll see a sample of what happens when you're not beginning at the right inclination and what to do then. But for now, uh, see, I've hit Minmus there. 
And so if you want to, you can just remember this angle here, right? So we're going to be hitting Minmus, call it uh, 60 degrees from where Minmus is at right now. So opposite that, you want to start your burn. This gets us to 245 kilometers from Minmus. Now, there are other possibilities as far as creating this. For instance, let's say you were at a really bad inclination with Minmus. You could actually transfer at the node and hope to hit it at the opposite node because that's when your orbit crosses Mimis's orbit. So if we do that, let's see. You'll see that this is totally the wrong time. Mimis is over there when we're over here. But if we overburn, that means that we're going to take longer. We're going to take this extra leg here and allow Minmus to catch up so that we can hit it. Yep. And so you see we can get an encounter like that and that's even if our orbits were not lined up. Though it's working out probably a little bit better here than it would if our orbits weren't lined up. Again I'll, I'll do an example of that later. But let's, let's just do a proper transfer to Minmus assuming that we've corrected inclination. Okay, another place that you can correct the inclination is away from Kerbin. Let's say this ascending node was out here somewhere instead of close to Kerbin there. It would be fairly cheap then to correct your inclination with respect to Minmus. Now for a Minmus transfer we're expecting 900 to 950 meters per second for the actual transfer depending on what orbit you get into. I'm gonna take SAS, well, let me just start burning, and then we'll turn to the, we'll use the engine gibbling instead of the reaction wheel to do most of the turn. That'll save us some electric charge. Though it still wants to use the reaction wheel a little bit. Okay, throttle down. We almost had an accidental moon encounter there, but that's not what we want. We seem to have lost our tar- no. It's just not lighting the orbit of Minmus for some reason. Okay, let's get rid of this. Alright, there we go. And here you see that our orbital velocity is really slow. And that should indicate to you that we're really close getting to Minmus here. We're really close to escaping Kerbin's sphere of influence and going interplanetary with it. Okay, here we are. And here I would like to get a little bit closer to Minmus, right? We're, we're floating a little bit high there, it looks like. I would rather have it below 25 kilometers. So what do I do in that case? Well, I do a radio burn. And this marker here, this marker here, that's the radial out. So that would actually push my orbit out. You can see there. This is really the only time that I'm very interested in using the radial markers. Normally you're just going prograde and retrograde and then if you need to correct the inclination you can use the the purple markers which are the inclination markers uh, these guys the triangles and then and then there's the radial in and out so we want to go radial in which is this one you can also press that button and then we will bring it in now sometimes, if you want to get into a polar orbit around Minmus, this would be the time to do it. And so then you would use the normal markers. So that would flatten it out. So let's go the other way. Let's do both at the same time. So we'll, we're going to pull the orbit in and also tilt the orbit up simultaneously. So we want to point ourselves in between the two markers. See how that works? Now the markers move, so uh, you have to adjust along with them as they as they move about. But it seems like we're we're close enough in there. That's 12 kilometers. So all I want to do is uh, tilt further, and there we go. Now we're in a polar orbit, polar approach around Minmus. Let's see how much it takes to get into orbit around Minmus. So we're going to double click on Minmus to focus on it. And I'm going to add a maneuver and get into a tight orbit around Minmus. 
so we can get a good look at the surface. All right, and it looks like it takes 158.6 meters per second. Not bad. We certainly have that much. It took 900 meters per second to get here, and we've burned less than half of our fuel. So we know that we have enough to get into Minmus orbit, and it takes about the same to break Minmus orbit and get back to Kerbin. So we know we have that as well. Now we haven't done the high over Minmus. Maybe I should leave the orbit a little bit loose for that. Let's see. I could, uh, after getting into this loose orbit, I can come back to periapsis and tighten it up later. Okay. So, without further ado, we can log temperature scan. And let's just transmit... Oh, wait. Hmm. So now we have the electric charge problem. And transmitting takes electric charge, right? Yeah, transmitting takes electric charge. I don't know if I covered that yet or not. So, actually, let's keep the experiment. Let's have a crew report. Keep that in space near Minmus. That's the only one we'll get out of that. And then have Jeb EVA out. And next time I should put the thermometer closer to Jeb. But let's take the data from the thermometer. And also uh, take the data from the command pod. We will do an EVA report. And this is Lowlands. We will keep that. And then we will board. Okay. So now we can do another temperature scan later. So lowlands, the temperature scan, we can only do a high over Minmus is the only other temperature scan we can do right now until we land. These don't seem like lowlands, these seem quite rugged, let's see. Slopes, definitely slopey. Okay, now there are also flats, the flats are the easy ones to spot, you know, this here's a flat. This area looks like a sea, but it's actually something you can land on. These you can land on. They're sort of like ice features, you know, but uh, yeah, those are called the flats, and each one is a different biome. Okay, let's see at Apoapsis if we are high over Minmus. I think the easiest way to check is the temperature scan. Yes, we are. High over Minmus. Measuring the temperature of space appears to be quite impossible. Yada, yada, yada. I'm glad they at least allowed us to uh, check the temperature of space. That, was, that wasn't always a thing. But you can't always assume stuff like space has zero temperature. That's not something you should... Wait a minute. Oh, I can't get that now? Okay, I guess we'll just... Hold on, maybe if I screwed up. Yeah, now I can uh, yeah, you can't assume the answer before you do the experiment. You can make a hypothesis before you do the experiment, but you can't say, oh, well, we already know that space has no temperature or whatever, which is not technically true. Um, yeah, you can't just say that offhand without actually doing an experiment. Now, in theory, I could just land on the engine even without landing legs, but there's no reason to hurry like that. It's not like we're desperate. Okay, here we go. EVA jab. EVA report. Midlands. Keep. Okay, board. I think we can hit a different one. I think definitely there's a flat there. Lesser flats. Okay, keep. Board. Alright. Next. So we've got lesser flats. We know there are greater flats. Probably currently on the dark side of the planet, uh, or the moon. The question may come up, do we have to worry about inclination when returning back to Kerbin? And the answer is no. Uh, now, if you wanted to get back to the KSC, then the answer is yes. If you wanted to land right at the KSC, then you have to do a little bit more work. But as far as just going back and not being too concerned about where you land, uh, you do not have to worry about inclination. Though... In general, it's easier to figure out things if you're in a flat orbit because, like I said in the previous video, you know, you have the 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock return points. If you're, uh, if you're orienting your orbit, if you've got the forward trajectory of the orbit like this, that's 12 o'clock. And then 
So if you're going around one way, you'll go, if you're going around this way, counterclockwise, you'll exit at 11 o'clock. If you're going clockwise, you'll exit at 1 o'clock, do your burn there. But uh, obviously in a polar orbit, it's not like that. Great flats. Okay, we did not get that one before. All right, great flats it is. I forget, uh, crew report is still near Minmus. I don't think we've done a high over Minmus crew report yet. So how do we get back? Well, somewhere around the equator would be good. But probably we'll have to make an adjustment once we're around Kerbin instead of around Minmus. But we could tweak this. Just sort of make sure that the outward going orbit is heading in the opposite direction as the forward orbit. So you can see Minmus is going around this way. So we want to have the escape over here in the opposite direction. So rather than adjust it here, I'm just going to be satisfied with an escape from this polar trajectory and then adjust it once we get into Kerbin SOI instead of Minmus SOI. Oh, there was a moon encounter there if we want to head back to the moon, but I think we'll focus on Minmus this time. Okay, so there we have an escape. Let's go for it. Combination missions would be best accomplished with some sort of solar panels. If I was going to do some complicated mission, I think I would need some way of replenishing my electric charge. So now that we are in Kerbin SOI, we can just point retrograde, I think, is simplest. And bring that orbit down. Retrograde also has the effect of taking energy out of the orbit so that we won't be going quite as fast on the Kerbin side when we hit the atmosphere. So that's nice too. Okay, well, I see a 27, though it could be 28. All right, let's go over there. Okay, we're close enough. I think uh, I will once again just see where we end up. It looks like we could end up pretty close to KSC like this, actually. On the other hand, we could end up on those mountains to the west of the KSC, which is not so great. But probably we'll end up in this ocean right here. Alright, let's let go of the second stage there. Okay, well, there's some worrying mountains right there, and we're not quite at retrograde. We should get past them. Still going very fast, well beyond Kerbin orbital velocities. Jeb is placid. It is all in a day's work for Jebediah Kerbin. The explosions you're hearing are, of course, the second stage. So after this, I'll try and get a lander mission together. We should land on Minmus and do some hopping. And on that one, I'll deliberately go into an orbit that's not lined up with Minmus to show what to do then. Okay, looks like we might touch down on land. No worry about the mountains, they're still in the distance there. And parachute. Okay. Initial parachute deployment is a, is a success. And Jeb is on the ground. Alright, recovering. Let's see how much science we get. 182 science earned. Very good. And Jeb is ready. Okay, let's go to the R&D building and get those things that we needed. So, solar panels and a probe core would be really helpful. We also wanted better landing struts. But if we send a probe to Minmus, maybe that'll be alright. We don't need the bigger landing struts just yet. But where are the big landing struts? Oh, this looks like it. Landing, yeah. Well, that's, that's an improvement anyway. But that requires these guys. Flight control. For some reason, the landing struts require aviation and flight control. 
because landing struts are really used in aviation a lot. Don't 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 question the whole tech tree. It's futile. Resistance is futile. Okay, research. And I guess I'll have to research aviation. Oh wait, can we get landing? No, it's not gonna let me because I don't have flight control. So I'll get flight control, but now we are short on the amount that we need for the landing struts. So again, these two are plane parts. And we can do planes later, but let's focus on rockets first because space. So this is the probe core I wanted, this Probodobodyne Octo. And the thing about it is that it's got a little reaction wheel and it's got SAS, so it can do stability. So that's nice. But it does require 1.2 electric charge per minute. So we're going to have to supply it with that constantly. Otherwise it's going to run out. We've also got an additional reaction wheel here. We might as well put that on. I think it's a good idea. So that'll give us even more control. But that too requires electric charge. The next thing would obviously be a fuel tank and then the electric charge, the solar panels. These supply 21 per minute as long as they're facing the sun. So four of them should be fine. But we'll have to make sure that they're facing the sun. Since this is going to be landing, the best thing to do is put them on top and angle them a bit. This is basically my favorite configuration for them. Sort of like that. Though uh, maybe we should have the bottoms actually touch the tank. Okay, that's good. Now, maybe we want a science junior as well. That's, that's a different thing altogether. We need to slip that in here and it's really bulky. Maybe a bigger tank. You can immediately see the problem with the science junior and the way it affects the look of our probe here. But I guess this will be alright. I prefer a much tighter probe. Well, we can't really... well... I was got to say we can't really put those there because we have to fit the LVT... Uh, L, sorry, LV909. But we could tuck the LV909 in. Uh, but it sort of pokes out. Forget it. This is all about aesthetics, after all. That's not much fuel for the LV-909, though. They're only 2.1 tons, and it can carry 6, right? Uh, 16 divided by 10 is 6. So it's got a huge thrust-to-weight ratio. And Minmus does not have much gravity. You don't really need a 1.0 thrust-to-weight ratio to land or get off of Minmus. Uh, Minmus only has 1 20th the gravity of Kerbin. And so what you really need is a 0.05 thrust weight ratio. So, so the LV-909, if Kerbin didn't have an atmosphere, would be able to carry 6 tons off the ground. Because Kerbin has an atmosphere, you have to go with the sea level one. And so it can really only carry 1.4 off the ground. But we're not really concerned about it getting 1.4 tons off the ground. It's a vacuum engine anyway. But on Minmus, it can lift 20 times that because... Mimus has uh, 20 times less gravity than Kerbin does. So the maximum payload capacity for this engine on Minmus is 120 tons. That's how much it can get off the ground. That's pretty impressive. And obviously this little two-ton probe is overpowered by having this engine. We really need a much tinier engine. Or we could dump more fuel on. But the problem with putting more fuel on is the landing struts. We've got these tiny tiny landing struts. Let's just ignore that. Let's put some goo containers. We want to recover this though. So we should put a parachute as well. And we'll need a heat shield. Hmm. Well there's a problem isn't it? Why don't we put the heat shield on top? So it can protect more stuff. But then the soul panels are in the way. So what you discover very quickly is what you would like, what you would really like, if you wanted to recover this, is some engines that can go on the side. Well, we have engines like this, but they're obviously too huge. We will eventually get the engines we're looking for, but we don't have them right now. So maybe this one will just transmit the information back, but then we need a lot more, a lot more battery power. And it's not the greatest thing. But I guess for now, since uh, 
it's a little bit cumbersome. We can figure out how to bring it back safely. I could think about that. But, yeah, let's just land it and have it hop about. Let's let's go for that. Um, in that case, lots of good containers. Okay, well, that's a probe. It's not the most aerodynamic thing with the pointy thing on top. But it shouldn't cause any obvious problems. So, once we put this here, six tons, and that can carry six tons, so that's fine. We haven't actually unlocked fairings yet, have we? That's fine. We don't need them just yet. Now this is a pretty light payload. We're not really carrying much over there. And we're not bringing it back. So maybe we can go without the boosters? Oh, uh, these are liquid. Th these are for the aircraft. Li uh, aircraft only need liquid fuel to run the jet engines. Rockets. For rockets, you need liquid fuel and oxidizer because you can't breathe in the oxygen to burn the liquid fuel with. Uh, for aircraft, though, with jet engines, you just uh, have the jet engine suck in the oxidizer, the oxygen, and so it'll use that to burn the fuel, and so it's more efficient because you don't have to carry the oxidizer with you. So that's a plus side to the jet engines. Downside is that once you're out of the atmosphere, you can't use them, right? And even in thin atmosphere, they're not, uh, they'll have diminishing thrust and, and flame out. Now once again, I'm not calculating anything here. So I'm going to try and put a swivel on the bottom here. And alright, uh, we're a little bit heavy. And we'll see if we can go with, maybe we'll put on uh, a single booster to start us out. No, let, let's try this without any boosters. We've got these nice LV-909 engines. wonder if we can get to Mendes like this. I don't know. Let's put some fins though. Oh, now we've got Delta Deluxe winglets. These are very good for control. Uh, but they're also expensive. Let's stick with the basic fins. I don't think we need the Delta Deluxe winglets. So there we go. We'll add boosters if necessary. Minimus probe. Let's try it. Okay, so as promised, this time I'm going to go into a deliberately horrible orbit. So I will actually tilt up uh, to 60 degrees heading. I'll go to a 60 degree heading and that'll give us even more than the difference between Minmus and Kerbin now. We'll actually have more than a 5 degree inclination. And then we'll see what to do about that. Okay, really trying not to flip this time. Sorry it's in the dark. And you can see I'm way off from 90 degrees here definitely producing some sort of inclination artificially just to make things hard on myself so if we take a look I've already got a 17 probably end up with a 20 degree inclination yeah let's aim for a 20 degree inclination obviously you would not want to do that but we are testing okay set ignition okay Control, okay. Control is a little bit jittery in this part of the atmosphere still. I'm getting the feeling that this was not a good trajectory for this rocket. We'll see. But we're still very low is what I'm having trouble with here. Our time to apoapsis is going up. T minus 24 seconds there. T-25, so that's good, but we're catching a lot of drag. Also, we're obviously not pointed at prograde vector, so this is not optimal. And now we're uh, seeing some of that drag in the form of heat. You can see the way we're tilting our orbit here. 
And we're at 21.2 degrees with respect to Minmus now. Okay, 100 kilometers. Let's coast to Apoapsis and complete this. We have a Periapsis there. We have spent this stage, so that's going to re-enter. And now we're on the lander stage, actually. Alright, that's good enough. So now what do we do? We've gotten into this horrible orbit that should never have been. Which is totally not lined up with Minmus. Well, there are a couple of possibilities. You recall the one where I said you could try and hit it at the descending node, so we can add a maneuver here. Well, uh, actually it'll be easier to do it the other way around. Since Minmus is heading over there, we will make our burn at the de descending node and try to hit it at the ascending node. You can see that says that Minmus is going to be there while we're there, so we pull it. No, look, it's going away, so we actually have to go this way. Be very, very careful. This sort of transfer is very touchy. Now you see we're a little bit high there. That's because if we take a look, we're not really hitting it at the ascending node. So we want to uh, drag our maneuver node so that we really will be hitting it at the ascending node. There we go. And there, Minmus Encounter, Minmus Periapsis. We can get it really close to. And you can see it doesn't cost that much. In fact, it costs about the same. So, yeah. So that's one way of doing it. Even if you're in a horrible inclination and didn't match it initially, this works just fine. But uh, what if we want to do the other way? Remember, uh, what if, for instance, uh, that would take too long? Because we have to wait for Minmus to get all the way over here. But we really needed to get there quick for some reason or another. And so we only wanted the 60 degree one. Well, that, that might cost a little bit more. So let's say we want to hit it right away. Or soon. Sooner than waiting till the other part of the orbit. Well, here we, we're aiming to hit it over here. I've kept it short because... If we go too much further, we're going to be on escape. So we restrain it. Because we're going to put more energy into the orbit here. Remember I said that you could adjust the inclination easier if you were further away from Kerbin. This is sufficiently far away, so let's see how much it's going to cost. That's the descending node, so we pull it up. But we're on escape again, because we put too much energy into the orbit, so we pull that back. There we go. So now we have uh, another encounter there. Oh, it's not really showing me the periapsis number there, but we can clearly see a periapsis. How much does this burn cost, though? Hmm, I detect a sort of UI bug, so let me get out of the map mode. Come back in. Ah, there we go. So, we've got a periapsis there. The initial burn costs 897, and this mid-course correction costs an additional 320. So, altogether that costs uh, 300 meters per second extra to do it this way. Benefit is that you get to Minus really quickly. Downside is that you, it costs more, and it's cheaper to do the other way. So, yeah, this is called a mid-course correction, mid-course adjustment, mid-course plane change in this case, specifically. Uh, it's changing the plane. You can see initially we're in this sort of plane. You can imagine a flat surface tilted like this and then we're changing that into a flat surface tilted like that. That's why it's called a plane change. Now which one should I do this time? Well, oh, uh, my electric charge is running out too. Hmm. It seems like we're not properly... T no, uh, wait a minute. The solar panels are sort of facing the sun. Uh, let me take SAS off. That'll help. Okay. So now we're recharging. Uh, we're recharging, but we're tilting away from the sun. Hmm. Ah, the problems with electric charge. Alright, well, uh, I'll sort that out later. 
Yeah, I don't feel like I have a lot of Delta V to spare, so I'll take the time instead of spending the extra Delta V. So I'm going to go with this way and just wait. This is called an off-plane transfer, so, and it's called that because obviously we are approaching Minmus in a way that is not in line with Minmus's plane. So Minmus is in a flat surface like that, and we're in a flat surface inclined like that. We're not even trying to correct our inclination at all. So that's why it's an off-plane transfer. All right, looks like we're good. Let's go. Actually, for this part, we can undo the thrust limiting. Let's make sure the estimate burn time is about double the time to the node. That'll do the trick. Now, because we had less delta V than I thought we would, I don't think we're going to do too much hopping. We'll probably just land on Mimis somewhere and do a reading. We'll do some goo experiments in orbit. High over Minmus and low over Minmus. But that's about it. Okay, so our approach is like that right now. The thing about an off plane transfer is it is a little bit finicky, so you have to do it properly. Make sure you hit it as close as possible. That'll do for now. So now it's going to take us a whole 22 days to encounter Minmus which is a lot longer than it, than it normally takes. And that's largely because we're delaying waiting for Minmus to catch up to this point, which happens to be the point where this weird skewed orbit meets Minmus's orbit. Now, mid-course plane changes sometimes are absolutely necessary. Sometimes you just can't get the right timing for an off-plane transfer, especially to the other planets. You aren't always at the right location to hit the other planet at the ascending or descending node. So in that case, you have to do a mid-course plane change of some kind. So you can expect that. So now we're a little bit far away from Inmus, so we're going to once again point radial in and then correct that. Okay, and here we will do our first GUI experiment. Make sure we're getting some sunlight, yes. So, observe Mystery Goo. Well, that's pretty bad for the transmission gap between transmit and recovery, but I guess we'll take what we can get. So now we will get into orbit. And while we're doing that, we can do the Goo. And transmit the data. Okay, we are in orbit. We can get into a, well, seems a little bit unbalanced. We're pretty darn close to Minmus on this side. So to correct that, that we can do, a, as much as I hate doing radial burns, we can do a radial burn uh, the other way. And so you can see I can adjust my orbit. Only do this around moons that are really, really small like Minmus. We'll land here. We'll land over here. I guess there was really no point doing the radial burn except to demonstrate it because I want to bring our orbit down so we have a nice low pass over that location and then we can land on the flats. Now remember, Mimis's gravity is so low that we might as well turn this to a pretty low thrust. Let's say 10%. That's probably still overdoing it. Because Mimis has such a low gravity, I'm not going to kill any of my vertical velocity right now. I want it to pull me down. It's going to take so long to do it. I don't want to stop it from doing it. So I'm going to actually point at the horizon line, this line here, right under the retrograde marker, and then kill my horizontal velocity because I don't want to go go further this way. I can land right here and it's fine. In fact, if I land right here, I could probably hop onto this part and get a different biome. So now we're going just straight down, and that'll be quite simple. Remember we have a lot of thrust to work with if we want to undo the thrust limiting, so we can do the burn pretty late as far as saving ourselves. The flats are generally at 
uh, an altitude of zero. Yeah, one tough thing about landing in KSP sometimes if you don't have other tools to help you out is that you don't know how high the terrain is, especially with probes. In capsules, when you have a Kerbal, you can actually look inside the capsule, the IVA view, and there will be a radar altimeter there, which will tell you how high you are above the surface. But you don't have that with probes. So finding a location that happens to be at a zero altitude is helpful, and the flats are like that on Minmus. Okay, there we are. We have reached our destination. Observe Mystery Goo. Okay, Greater Flats. Let's transmit that. Yep. We can do the thermometer from here. Transmit that data. I have no idea what benefit recovering the thermometer would do as far as the information gleaned from it. Okay, so we have one goo container left. Let's see if we can hop somewhere. Uh, actually, let's see if we can hop up there. So let's head north. Always give yourself a little bit of room to slow down. So I've set my arc to that side with the intent of slowing down and bringing myself down around here. Now this is not zero altitude, so I'll have to be a little bit more careful. Okay, there we go. Final goo container. And we can do the thermometer reading, I think. Okay, so let's transmit that. Yes. Lowlands. Didn't seem very low to me. It's 2.35 kilometers, but oh well. Transmitting that. Alright, let's go back to the Space Center and see much, how much we have in total. Oh uh, well, 83.7, not quite enough in order to unlock landing. So we'll have to do something else before bringing a Kerbal down to the surface of the Moon or Minmus. Uh, possibly a probe to the Moon would be good, but maybe we need to look interplanetary next. I think our next target will be Duna. Uh, and so we will launch a probe. Let's see about the phase angles. Let's see if Duna is getting to the right place for a transfer. No, not really. Uh, it's way over there. Oh no, uh, well, I mean, we'll catch up to it. So, yeah, maybe in about a month of waiting, we can catch up to Duna and transfer to it. So I think that'll be the goal next time, is to talk about interplanetary transfers a bit, and to send a probe over to Duna. Alright, and hopefully with that, we will be able to get the science that we need to set a Kerbal on the surface of the Moon and Minmus. Alright, on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.